Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where OP has one of the most repulsive mothers I've ever seen on the internet. Our next Reddit post is from Money Photograph. I'm a 29-year-old woman, and I have an older stepbrother, Chris, who's 42. Wow, 42 to 29, that's a 13-year age difference. He's been a nightmare since the day that my mom married his dad. Our parents married when I was four and Chris was 17. Both of our parents were widowed. After the wedding, we moved to the US. I was born in the US as well, but after my dad died when I was one, my mom and I moved back to Colombia. My stepdad got his residency through marriage and my stepbrother got his because he was a minor. My stepbrother wasn't a big fan of me. My only memories of him are just constant bullying. He would be left in charge of me since he was studying locally and lived with my parents. But mostly, his version of babysitting really meant things like locking me in the guest bathroom or in the shed outside. He would steal my lunchbox whenever he was the one who dropped me off at school. He even began to harm my pets. I have an old cat who's been with me for almost 22 years. He tried more than once to run her over with his car. My parents never believed any of it. He's the classic golden child. My mom absolutely wanted a son instead of a daughter, so my stepbrother took priority over me. The bullying just kept getting worse and creepier. Like, he had this key to my bathroom. He would use this key to walk in on me when I was showering. My underwear would disappear sometimes, and I know for a fact that it was him. He also started taking pictures of me while I was sleeping. One night, I woke up to him taking care of himself next to me while I slept. I yelled, obviously. My parents came, but he didn't get in trouble. I got in trouble for, oh my god, I got in trouble for tempting him. I was 14 when this happened. He was 27. No one helped me and he got bolder until he did something that I'm still in therapy for when I was 16. It got to the point where I called my biological half-older brother, Sam, who's 48, the son of my biological father's first wife, to see if I could live with him and his wife, Sandy, during my last two years of high school. When Sam found out what was going on, he confronted my mom. My mom didn't care and just told him to take me so long as he never asked her for money. Done and done. My brother and his wife became my legal guardians and took me in with my cat and the old family dogs since I didn't trust leaving any living creature with Chris around. My parents never checked on me. My extended family from my father's side knew what happened and they immediately got together to ensure that I could finish school well and go to college. I don't know my maternal family at all. Thanks to my paternal family, including Sam's mother and her family, I got my bachelor's and my master's, no student debt, and I work as a nurse practitioner. I still live with Sam, his wife, and their two kids, and I pay a small rent. Neither Sam nor his wife expected me to pay anything, but that's the least that I can do for the two people who have taken care of me for 13 years. For anyone wondering why I don't move out, it's incredibly expensive where I live, and Sam insisted that I stay with them until I save enough money to buy my own home. Things seemed okay, until my mom messaged me recently. She hadn't messaged me since I was 18, and she told me that she no longer had any responsibility to me. In this message, she sounded overly friendly, telling me how she missed me and asking how I was doing. I was a bit creeped out, but decided to be nice, telling her about what I'd done since leaving her care. She seemed very interested, since apparently she knew that I was a nurse, but not what kind of nurse I was. Then, she began asking me about my salary. I didn't tell her anything, except that it was enough to pay my bills. My mom then began texting me about Chris and how he was barely making any money due to his student debt. Apparently, Chris never finished his degree, jumping from career to career instead. Now, he's working in my stepdad's used car business as a salesman. But most of his pay went to pay the substantial student debt that he got over the years. I told my mom how sorry I was that Chris was having a hard time and I wished him luck. That's when my mom finally got to what she wanted. She texted me that I needed to pay a student debt so that he could finally begin to make the money that he deserves like the man of the family. I just turned my phone off. Later, when I got home, I told Sam about what happened and I showed him my mom's text messages. I don't think that I've seen Sam this angry ever. He told me to block my mom, stepdad, and Chris. 
The next day, Mom and Chris decided to come to Sam's house to speak to me. I was alone that day since Sam and Sandy were at work and the kids were at school. I immediately called Sam and told him what was going on. He told me not to open the door and that he was on his way. My mom spent the whole time screaming that I owed them for raising me and that my sweet brother deserved the money. Chris was going around the house trying to find a window or a door that was unlocked. I won't post what Chris called me, but basically, he pretty much told me that they should have thrown me away when I was a baby since I grew up to be a B-word. He pounded one of the windows so hard that he actually cracked the glass. Eventually, he gave up and went back to the front door, clearly trying to kick it down. Between the yelling, threatening, pleading, and insults, I finally heard Sam screaming at them to get lost. I only saw things from the window, but Sam pretty much dragged them both off the porch. They got far enough away that I couldn't hear them, but I saw my mom and Chris look pale and scared before they pretty much ran to their car and drove off way past the legal speed limits. Sam came in a bit later and immediately went into full overprotective brother mode, asking me if I was okay. He kept saying sorry and hugging me. His wife Sandy arrived almost immediately after, and she looked like she was about to commit a felony. Apparently, Sam threatened Chris to file charges for what he did to me when I was 16, and my brother's ace was that my stepdad was willing to testify against his own son. That seemed enough to get Chris off our backs, but not my mom. Since then, it's been three days, and my mom has texted me, called nonstop with various numbers, and rallied a group of people who are supposedly my maternal family to harass me for money. She claims that my money should legally be hers since she's my mother. That it's my late father's missed child support? What? Sam is helping me find a lawyer to get a restraining order on my mom, and I plan to take my stepdad's offer to testify by pressing charges against Chris. I can't say that I forgive him for not stopping his son, but I appreciate that he's at least trying. I don't know the exact details, but apparently Chris did something to a relative of his dad, and since then, they had a really bad fallout. So I'm currently taking a vacation from work, and my vacation days are getting eaten up, and my therapist might need a therapist for herself afterwards. Thankfully, my dark sense of humor and supportive paternal family are keeping me somewhat sane. Then, OP posted an update. We're following through with pressing charges and might do a civil lawsuit for two years of child support that my mother owes. We're not sure what our chances are yet, but my brother Sam wants to go scorched earth. As for my mother, she began a new campaign. She's been posting about me falsely accusing my stepbrother Chris of sexual assault. She's been accusing me of being a temptress that tried for years to sleep with my brother. And she even got a few relatives, who I just found out are my aunts, to join them in saying that they were witnesses. I've never met these women in my life! My stepfather actually commented on one of her posts saying that my mom was lying and accused his own son of being a P-word. That's how I found out what the big fallout was between them. Turns out, my stepbrother went after one of my stepfather's nieces. I don't know the girl's age, but she had to be about my age if I'm thinking about the right person. And if I'm not thinking about the right person, then she's even younger than that. A lot of my biological father's relatives have also gone on social media to call out my mother, saying that she's always claimed that she was an orphan and had no family, while now she has three sisters. Also, just to clarify, I don't think that my mom is sleeping with or in a relationship with my stepbrother. I think it's just that my mom has always wanted a son, and I was a disappointment because I was born a girl. She treats my brother like he's her real son, and I think that she truly loves him as a mother. She made sure to tell me how disappointing it was for her when I was born. Then, OP posted another update. In my previous posts, I haven't said a lot about my biological father. He died when I was one, so I never really met him. I mostly know about him from stories from his family. What I do know is that he was a man of means. He had a lot of assets that he carefully divided in his will. Not like so rich that I'll never have to work, just rich enough that I would be able to live comfortably so long as I worked and did right by my finances. I wasn't aware that my dad had left me anything. Neither was my half-brother Sam. For clarity, my dad had Sam with his first wife, and I'm the daughter of an affair partner turned second wife. 
My understanding was that anything I inherited was wasted by my mother to buy things for her predator stepson Chris, who she preferred to me. In my mom's words, Daughters don't need an inheritance. Just marry a wealthy old man like me. Well, since my mother and Chris had both been harassing me lately, we drove to my dad's lawyer to get some things we need from him, as well as my dad's records for the lawsuit that we're planning. Once we caught up with the lawyer, we found out that my mother had been faking receipts to get money from my trust. A lot of money. Some of it was from when I was under Sam's guardianship. And she's not the executor of my trust, so she had to provide receipts for anything. Well, we not only destroyed her meal ticket, but now she's in big trouble. Because this is fraud, and basically, my hands are tied about pressing charges or not. My mom claims me as a dependent on her taxes, so my dad's lawyer would refund her for her expenses. My dad's lawyer basically told me that there's just no way that we can keep this just in civil court. He's obligated to contact the IRS and the police. It doesn't help that she's been using my social security number for some things that she shouldn't be. The funny thing is, I wouldn't have done anything about my mom using my trust if she had just left me alone. I wouldn't have even known about it because the trust is set for me to take over it with proof of marriage or on graduating college. And since I didn't know about it, I never sent the required paperwork to take control. My mom could have milked the account dry if she just left me alone and just kept sending in fake information. I'm in the process of getting what's left from my trust. There's quite a bit of money in it, and it should be enough for me to get a house or a condo if I combine it with my savings. And I might still have money left over to invest or do other things safely. I might wait for a while to buy anything though. I don't know how safe it would be since my mom still has my social security number. Then OP posted an update, and I love the title. My entitled mother is begging me to reconcile. Hmm, I wonder where this sudden change of heart is coming from. Okay, last night, I decided to go out with some girlfriends for a girls' night. We went to a local bar. Well, my good mood was ruined when I noticed my mother, thankfully alone, walked to me. The moment she saw me, she pretty much launched herself at me and began crying, saying how she had missed me and how different I looked. I was trying really hard to get away from her, but she began causing a scene. She started begging for us to reconcile. That she was sorry that I took my stepbrother's affection the wrong way. That they both love me and they want me to live with them. She was loud and people were looking at me. Some people even looked sorry for her and I had people encouraging me to hug my mom back. It was embarrassing and just so wrong. I just exploded and told her to leave me alone and I walked out. My mom kept following me, along with two or three other people with her calling me a butthole and a terrible daughter. She just kept swearing that Chris truly cares for me and wants us to be a family again. She even said that he found me so beautiful that he couldn't help himself when he assaulted me. Or, in my mother's words, when he made love to you. I was a minor when he attacked me. He was almost 30. I just started crying and screaming at her to go away and leave me alone. Thankfully, one of my friends called Sam and he came very quickly. He scared my mom away and took me home. Man, it's so crazy that OP can endure a lifetime of abuse and toxic behavior. But the second she cuts off her mother's money, suddenly, let's be friends, let's reconcile, I've always loved you, come live with us. Yeah, right. Our next Reddit post is from Long Lost Neverland. So, my aunt has two kids. One is a boy who's basically fine and no trouble at all. He's eight. However, my evil cousin, who's a girl, is two. She wants everything. Seriously, if you have something and she doesn't, she holds her breath and won't breathe until she has it and cries non-stop until she gets what she wants. Anyways, it was the eight-year-old's birthday and he was having a birthday party. However, my aunt told me that it would be a party also for her daughter whose birthday is in December. There would be two cakes, two birthday banners, one with her name on it, and people would have to pretend that it was her birthday too. Like, what the hell? How is this fair for the actual birthday boy? Anyways, my aunt told everyone that we had to bring gifts for both of the kids, and if not, we weren't able to attend because it had to be fair for both of them. I did not buy presents for both kids, but I attended anyway, and it was something from my worst nightmare. 
Everyone was tending to the girl, and no one besides me acknowledged the actual birthday boy. People even sang happy birthday to her, took pictures of her, and she got loads of money and a new bike. She got double what the birthday boy got. I felt so bad for him, and I saw him crying in his room, so I went up and he said that no one cares about him. So I argued with my aunt about this, and she said that I ruined the day and that I need to leave. What an entitled woman and her horrid entitled bratty kid. Man, I'm really curious about what her birthday is like. Does the aunt double up and do a birthday for him, or is it exclusively a birthday for the daughter? My guess is that it's just a birthday for the daughter. That was our slash entitled parents. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.